like God has a word for us in this house, and I'm excited to, to bring it to you. Um, our scripture today is coming from John 7, 37 and 39. We're still in the season of Pentecost. Amen. Even though we just celebrated Pentecost last Sunday, and Pastor Mike preached a word from on high, we are still in the season. We're in the season of Pentecost. Um, and uh, are, is the scripture ready? We good? John, if not, we got to go to the old school. Break out your phones. Turn to your Bible app. John 7, 37. Y'all, look, y'all, you got to be, be you also ready. Y'all wasn't ready. You ain't got your apps loaded. We got paper Bibles. I see you. I see you modeling. Anybody need a paper Bible? Y'all ain't seen them in, a, in years. We'll be looking for John where Genesis is. We, ain't, we don't know. We don't, it's okay. Anybody want a good? Anybody paper Bible saved? <laughs> All right. Turn to John 7. We good, Mike? All right. Let's go. John 7, 37. I believe I'm reading from NIV, I think it is. And it reads, there it is. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers. Somebody say rivers. Rivers of living water will flow within them. By this, he meant the spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the spirit had not been given since Jesus had not been glorified. May God bless God's holy word for our people. God, we thank you for this time. God, I pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to receive your word. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our subject today is called an inside job. An inside job. And before we get started, I have a question. I have a question. You know, I always have questions. I have a question. Um, those who have kids still in their households, do kids still drink from water hoses? Is that still a thing? Do you know any children, any child that still drinks from a water hose? Anybody? No, no, they're a little too bougie. They got uh, what they call it, um, alkaline 88. They have essentias now. Anybody grow up drinking from a water hose? Raise your Look at God. Look at us. Woo, what? Come on. Man, because... Wasn't that water delicious? What was it about it? It was <laughs> lead. <laughs> the lead was great. <laughs> and why did we drink from the water hose? We was thirsty, but you know, if you went in that house, you couldn't come back out. Stop running it back in and back and forth in and out of my house. Right? Y'all remember that? Water hose. The water was good. That water was delicious because there's nothing worse than feeling parched. We've been outside playing. Kids don't even know what playing. We, I mean, we played hard. We skinned our knees. We fell. We had, we played, we got dirty. We had, remember y'all, we had play shoes and then you had dress shoes, right? Go put them play shoes on because we really played hard back then. That we needed that water because we played so are you parched. Anybody know what it feels to be parched? There's nothing worse than feeling parched. Have you ever needed water and didn't even know you needed water? You ever went to the doctor and you was like, I don't know. I just feel I don't know what's going on. They're like, ma'am, you're dehydrated. Anybody got that before? I don't know why I have headaches. I don't know why I'm so grumpy. I don't know why I'm just doing it. You, you need water. You need water, not coffee, not soda, not tea. Let the Lord rest wherever that needs to rest. <laughs> Walking around dehydrated. So we know that in the spirit now. We know that in the natural. Imagine in your spirit. Imagine how parched we can get. Walking around in this life dehydrated, spiritually dehydrated. 
spiritually parched, just dry. Have you ever been in a dry season? Have you ever just felt dry? I don't know, nothing right, nothing works, nothing tastes right. Just, dry. just we out here ashy in the spirit. Needing some, lo- just using a dollar store lotion. It don't even, why do they even sell that? Okay, never mind. Let me get back to my. This is where we find Jesus in this passage. And this is who Jesus was talking to in our scripture. A bunch of people who did not know that they were spiritually dehydrated. In this passage, we find Jesus in the middle of a party. Yeah, y'all thought that Jesus was just, you know, all walking around with the halo and holding lambs. No, Jesus was actually at a party. It was a festival. Uh, it says, it, it, in our, when they introduced it, it said, on that great day, the last day of the, of the festival. Anybody love a good festival? It's summertime. Come on, anybody love a good festival? Good food, good music, people walking around. It, nothing's like a good festival. Well, you, if you love festivals, then you would have loved where Jesus was because Jesus was attending a festival. It was one of three Jewish pilgrimages that they were required to, to attend. It was called the Festival of Tabernacles or the Festival of Booths. It was named so because the people would set up these outdoor shelters, and they would be made of, like, leafy. If you like camping, this would have been your jive, right? They set up these little leafy shelters, and it was meant uh, to signify the time when Israel was walking through the wilderness, and they didn't have a home, right? And they would stay in these little shelters that they would make for seven days through the, through the festival, it was like a big deal. You come, you go, it's like you went camping, you set up, you make your little tent, your little tabernacle, and it was to, to celebrate all the time how God was faithful to Israel during those uh, wilderness years and how they, how they came from leafy shelters and the key symbols of it was water and light. Jesus was at a party. And I love that Jesus saw through all the partying and stood up and made an announcement. In verse 37, he said, on the last day of the festival, he waited to the end. And he said in a loud voice, the nerve. Jesus got up in a loud voice, made a scene, and said, let anyone who was thirsty come to me and drink. I love that Jesus saw all these people partying, having a good time, eating, drinking, music, building shelters. And he saw all through it. He saw, she, he saw through it all and said, hey, I know what you really need. If anyone, it was, anyone thirsty, come to me. Have you come to the point in your life where you have finally realized that nothing really satisfies? <laughs> nothing really satisfies but Jesus. Have you come to that point? Are you still exploring? You know, we all got to go through our exploration years. It's cool. If you're still on your journey, God bless you on your journey, but I can help you uh, save some time on your journey. Nothing else really satisfies but Jesus, and they were all dry. They was all dry. They was all dry. It was the last day of the feast, and you know, they probably had a time. Ooh, we had a time. They probably went, ooh, they had, they had did all the things. And Jesus got the nerve to stand up and say, y'all still thirsty, huh? Y'all done did all these things? Y'all have fun? Uh-huh. Did. You're still thirsty, ain't you? You went to all you, y'all set up your little booths? That's cool, that's cool. Still thirsty. Are you still looking for things? Let me tell you why this is so significant. The largest crowds was on the final day of the feast. Whew, I love Jesus. The festival, the last day, included a, a water ceremony, which he was so good. It's a famous water pouring ceremony that served to remind the people of God's goodness and providing rain for crops and for the previous years and the years to come. Water was to drink during their ancestors' wilderness journey and hope for the water to be ter- poured out in the messianic age. Jesus waited to the last day of the feast 
when they did the little water ceremony, watch them pour it out, watch them do all these things, and be like, oh, okay, y'all like your little water thing? Y'all not even realizing that living water is right here. Y'all doing all this in hopes of the Messiah to come? Messiah's right here looking at Jesus actually fulfilled that the festival of the tabernacle, the festival of the booths. He's standing right there. He is the living water. And we just celebrated Pentecost, amen, the birth date of the Christian church. It's the day the church was born, when the Holy Spirit was sent, when God sent God's Spirit to no longer reside in temples, no longer to reside in tabernacles, but now the Spirit of God would live in a human temple. Moving away from all the things that they used to go and see God, now God now lives inside of us. A human temple. Come on, raise your hand and say, I'm a human temple. But the only prerequisite Jesus had for these people was come and drink and believe in Jesus. Come, come, come. Come is a very interesting word because he's not interested in someone being coerced. He's not interested in someone letting it be their grandma's religion. Not interested in someone telling you to come to church because it might make you feel better. No, to come and drink the holy spirit then in my deduction of my theory that i am presenting to you all the holy spirit is going to set up inside of each believer a personal irrigation system that dwells on the inside of you you gotta get this when you receive the holy spirit when you believe in jesus there is an internal watering system that is available to you that dwells on the inside. Somebody should be happy about that. Someone should be happy and excited that inside of you, it's an inside job. You have indoor plumbing inside of you. What does that mean? You know why people are not excited about it? Because we don't even know it exists. We don't even know we got access to it. When you realize you got access to this, it changes everything. Remember the woman at the well? Remember, she was like, so what's this water? What's this water? Okay, so if you give me this water, I'll never have to come here again. Cool, bet. Like, where's that water? Remember in John 4, I'm going to put it up on the screen, Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks this water will thirst again, talking about the well water. But whoever drinks the water I shall give them shall never thirst. Come on, you gotta sit in that. Cause that, that makes me realize, like that makes me feel like then why do I go through my dry, thirsty seasons then when this type of water is available to me? But the water I give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Come on, there's a fountain of water springing up inside of you into everlasting life. That's why that song, Sister Michelle could walk around and, 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 and rejoice in that because she caught the revelation that there is inside of you a well that God is digging out and excavating inside of you. And inside of that well, the Holy Spirit will give you a spring that will always spring up inside of you. Why is this so important? Living water will come from within you. This is why this is so important. This means that our thirst problem. Anybody had a thirst problem before? You ever thirst for things? You ever wanted things? You just, you're always like, oh, I'm always right in my grasp, but I can't get them always. You know, the young folks say you're thirsty out here being thirsty on the, on the Instagram. You're just out here being just thirsty, right? That means our thirst problem can never be solved by an external source. Get this. Your thirst problem can never be solved by an external force. Try it if you want to. Get into a relationship. Go party all you want. Try every drug out there. Do all the things. Go for, go get all the money in this world. Go do it all. And you will find you're still thirsty. 
on the inside. Did y'all see what Sister Cardi B said this week? Did y'all see Sister Cardi B? Y'all didn't see what she had said? They did a whole little article. She had made a little tweet that said, she is actually bored with fame. She got all the things she's ever wanted, everything she's ever dreamed of from coming up as a little girl in New York and coming from the Dominican, everything she had. And now she says, you know, being famous is kind of boring. I miss my old life. I miss, you know, just being, just being able to do what I used to do. Isn't that amazing? You get all the things and you're still thirsty. There's still something gnawing on the inside of you. But let me tell you, this is why I'm going to need some help, LJ. Let me tell you, I got good news for you on today. If you get a hold of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to say it again. If you get a hold of the Holy Ghost, Remember, I, I didn't say Holy Spirit. Today, I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. We taking it old school. If you get with the whole sister, when you get a hold of the Holy Ghost, everything you need will be generated from an internal source that lives inside of you. You gotta understand this. You have a fountain inside of you by the Holy Ghost, if you would tap into that, everything you need that you thought you needed from the outside, everything that you needed from other sources, all the validation you were seeking is actually already inside of you. Woo! That's good to me. He said in verse 39, he said, um, this, he, he was talking about the Holy Spirit. Remember, he would say, rivers of living water. Come on, y'all got to get this imagery. He did not say trinkles. He did not say a spigot. He did not say a little salt, salt bay. He did not do that. Are you telling me that rivers can flow through me? Come on, you got to get this imagery. Anybody ever been to whitewater rafting? I want to go so bad. Can you take me? Can, we, can I be a, a, a church trip? Can we go? I want to go whitewater rafting so bad. But from what I gather, you've been, you can't control the river. All you can do is get in there and float in it. You just, you can't control where you're going. You just got to relax and just take the river. You know how powerful a river is? You know how powerful water is? Do you know what water beats rocks, right? Water is the most powerful element that we have on this earth because it can literally move mountains. It can just chip away. It makes wherever the water want to go, it's going to go. You give it a couple of years, a few centuries, it's going to make its way. Y'all see Africa is dividing now because water. There is water. There is, and he said um, uh, in verse 39, he meant the spirit for those who were later to receive. He meant the Holy Spirit. He meant the Holy Spirit when he was saying this. And get this, it wasn't for them at that time because they were on the other side of Pentecost. He was like, just wait, y'all. Just wait. Everything you want, everything you at this little festival trying to get, all these parties and all these external ways that you are trying to get filled up, just wait. When the Holy Spirit comes, I got you. So it makes me wonder if the gift wasn't available for them, but now it's available to us. Why do we live like it doesn't apply to us? Why do we shy away from Holy Ghost scenarios? I know we do. I know because people done done the most. I know. I know growing up, and I grew up in a good Baptist church. And we, no, no, no. Somebody get to shouting and hooping, and we like, no, 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 no. Bring all that down. We fan you. Fan it away. Fan it away. You're going to be all right. <laughs> We didn't, ooh, the fan, fan it, sis, yes. Why they got to fan it away? We didn't do that. We seen 
know, I would see things and we'd be like, yeah, that's not for me. They got they out here acting crazy. I don't know. Every, every TV show, every movie, when they do a church scene, they just do the most. People doing backflips down the aisle. I mean, like, come on, y'all. It don't be that bad. Come on. Because things that we see often make us wonder and make us feel like, nah, I'm kind of cool. I'm cool on that. And I'm all for being calm and cool and collected. How many people are like that? I'm just very calm. I'm cool. I'm collected. Put together when I walk into a room. I know how, how to act and how to be. I'm all for that. I'm all for being that. But every now and then, every now and then, y'all feel I'm all good for being calm and sweet. And, but every now and then, something happens when this human frame encounters the divine. Come on, you got to get this in your heart. Something happens when you try to hold the essence of God in this mortal body. It's like trying to hold fire. Try to, <laughs> in the bone. Do you ever try to light something and be cool and it was slowly going up to almost to your fingers and you finally got to be like, oh, something happens. So I'm all for being cool. But I need sometimes for us to get back to some type of expression. So every now and then the Holy Ghost makes you wave your hands. Every now and then you got to get up out your seat. Every now and then you got to jump because we are holding the divine. Hallelujah. It's okay for us to, I'm all for being cool and calm and collected. I love the calm and cool collected when I get them in their element. When I get them in their, at the football game. When I get them at the basketball games. When I get them at the little, what do y'all, the little uh, com comic cons. I don't know, people do all kind of things. And they be juiced and excited. You know, we don't, we, if you go to a game, you're not looking at the guy who got his shirt off and painted all blue. And we don't be like, oh, I'm never coming to this game because they do too much. We be like, okay, good for you. I'm just going, you know. That's how we are in the spirit. Let's let, let's bring back expression. Let's bring back, not over emotionalism. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about just doing stuff for doing stuff's sake. Yeah, yeah. But when you feel the Holy Spirit, when yeah. you are filled with the Holy Spirit, somebody said, it makes me want to raise my hand. It makes me want to jump and shout. It makes me want to leap for joy. It makes me want to show some sign of life because I got rivers. Y'all don't understand. I have rivers of living water flowing. I didn't say a creek. I didn't say a little, you know, a little drip drop. Rivers. How many glad for the river? Woo. And I know, I know, I know we talk about the Holy Ghost and we get a little sketchy about speaking in tongues. We get a little sketchy about it. What is it? Why? What is I don't know. I'm, mm, I'm a little too cool. And believe me, oh, I would argue folk down about it. You can, I was the expert of why you should not. I was, ooh, I was cold with it. In my good Baptist church, I would tell all the folk, it ain't necessary. <laughs> Until I started getting around some folk. And I'm like, well, what's this? Y'all got something I don't got? What, what is it? I kind of got godly jealous. Like, what y'all what, what, what doing? So you telling me it's a little, you know, we can't be scared of the supernatural. We serve a supernatural God. Don't you want something that's out of the ordinary a little bit sometimes? Just a little bit. I know we get sketchy about it. But when you get filled up with the presence of God, human words just don't cut it anymore. Human words can't even express. When you lean into the divine, when you are filled with the presence of God, when you tap into divine, human words can't even get it anymore. 
So I want us to, I want to challenge us to change our, our framework around it. So that we're not scared of whatever that we just said, have your way. We just said, have your way. And when you start feeling a little something, you'll be like, oh, no, mm -mm, I got to, mm -mm, no, I got to stay. Why don't we just let God do what God want to do? God, whatever you want to say in me, whatever you want to do in me, I'm willing to look like a fool for Jesus. I know I might be the only one to raise my hand on that one. I don't care. Y'all put me on, make me go viral. I don't care. The girl that did a cartwheel in the middle of the sun. I don't care. I'm willing to look crazy for Jesus. Let me wrap this up because I'm, whew. So how do we do, how do we tap into this kind of living? How do we tap into this river? How do we tap into this fountain? How do we tap into this moisturized Christian life? Well, we ain't ashy. Shea butter anointing in our souls. The lectionary passages we had today, uh, it was from 2 Corinthians 13, 14. And this is going to sum up everything I was talking about. It says, the grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of God and the communion or fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. This was Paul closing a letter, but it was so powerful. But he's a little key phrase that he put in here. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The communion yeah. of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The communion. If you want a river of living water running through you, if you want to tap into this internal source so that you don't need a lot of external validation, if you, let me tell you, everything you need is already inside of you. Can I say that? When you have the Holy Spirit, when you ask God to fill you up, you need more love. It's already there. You need more peace. God, give me peace. No, no, no. You tap, you, you tap it out here. It's in here. Everything you need is already inside of you. We just have to tap into the Holy Spirit and let it flow. Yes. I'm, I'm going to help somebody today. Oh, yes. Because a lot of times, you know, I do a lot of counsel. I talk to a lot of people. I can tell when you're not praying because we're confused. And we're like, I don't know. See, when we come talk to me, you should already have a confirmation of, I really think God is already saying this, but I want to talk to somebody else about it. Because you've already tapped into an internal source. Yeah. Fellowship is the key. Yes, yes. If you want to live this life, yes. if you want to tap into this irrigation system, you got to have fellowship. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Communion with the Holy Spirit. I am determined to not just worship God on Sundays. This will not be my only worship time. I am determined to not just pray on Tuesdays. Tuesdays here at night will not be my only prayer time. I am determined to open up my Bible or look at a Bible verse more than on Sundays when it pops on the screen. It's a time of fellowship. It's a daily, daily communion with God. It's fellowship, it's communion, it's hangout time, it's camaraderie, it's companionship, it's togetherness, it's intimacy with the Holy Ghost. See, we didn't even know this is possible because we're still thinking the Holy Spirit is a thing. The Spirit is not a thing. Holy Spirit is a person. It's the Spirit of Jesus. Jesus was like, it's good that I go away. Yo, you, would, you would want me to go away because only one of me were here. But if I go away, I will send the Holy Spirit. And it could be and dwell inside of each of you. And it's not just to make us jump and shout, even though that's a wonderful benefit of it. But the benefit of it is that we will have everything we need already living inside of us. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is able to be grieved. It brings joy. Remember that new wine? That's the new wine of the Holy Spirit. He's able to fill you up, give you power to do things supernaturally that you can never do on your own. How many are ready to live that kind of life? I'm tired of the ordinary. There's got to be more to this Christian life than just coming to church on Sunday. God, will you use my life supernaturally and do things that I never thought possible? But you can only do it when you're tapped in to the Holy Spirit. 
when the Holy Spirit is in you, there's no need to run dry. No need to run dry. Because the spirit that lives within us never runs dry. You got to get this if you don't hear nothing else. There's no need for us to live dry, parched lives spiritually. There's no need. That's like being a millionaire. You never go to the bank and get a withdrawal. There's no need to live dry. He said, if anyone who drinks of this water will never run dry, never run dry, never run dry. Can you hear me? Never run dry. It keeps bubbling up. It keeps bubbling up. It keeps coming up. Anything you need, it keeps coming up. It's an internal source. It's an irrigation system. Are y'all tracking with me? Y'all understand? We're trickling. We're not trickling little drops. It's rivers. It's rivers. So how, you might say, Pastor Nisha, how will I know? How will I know the Holy Spirit is in me? How will I know the Holy Spirit is working? How do I know it's activated? Remember, Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate, activate, activate. How will I know it's activated? And I'll tell you how. I know a lot of us, you know, we, we like to use different expressions as measures, but I even think it's deeper than expressions. It's deeper than just speaking in tongues. It's deeper than just running and jumping and shouting. You want to know what the real measurement of the Holy Spirit's work in your life? It's the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, gentleness, Amen. temperance. Yes. That is fruit. You hear what it is? It's fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yes. It's what, what, is what comes out of your life. Fruit comes out of your life. When you are, and we can't do none of these things on our own. Have you tried to do any of those things on your own and we fail miserably? That's why we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Look, if I'm an apple tree, an apple tree gives apples. But the tree never eats the apple. The apple is for everybody else. It's for others. It's for others. Just like that river that lives inside of you is not for you. Good. It's good to have it. But it's, it's to flow out. Who in your life needs rivers of life? It says life abundantly. Who needs? Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Living water. What is this that Jesus is talking about? Living water? How can water be alive? It's living water that can live inside of us and give us life. That person can't give you life. That job won't give you life. It'll make you happy for a moment. Those things, out external sources will make you temporarily happy. But if you want that internal joy, that source that bubbles up, this is something that I can't give you as a pastor. Every Sunday, a message can't give you. It has to live inside of you. So this is what we want to tap in. Y'all can go ahead and stand. This is what we want to tap in. We want to tap into that living water. Living water. If that is your heart's desire, if you've heard this sermon and you're like, man, I, I need, I need, I need an inside job. I need the Lord to come and do a plumbing, a plumbing job on the inside of me. To set up an irrigation system where I'm always internally watered. If that's you, can you lift your hands and just say, God, that's me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me anew. Fill me afresh. What I love about the Holy Spirit is it's just like gas. You fill up your tank. <laughs> In a few days, if you're leaving a week, you're going to need another fill up. It's, it, that's how the Holy Spirit designed it. It's not a one and done. It's not something I did when I was seven. It's daily. God, I need you to fill me. I need you to fill me and fill me to the overflowing. God, I'm, God, I realize that I've been looking in the wrong places. I have been dry because I'm looking in the wrong places. I've been waiting on validation. I've been waiting to get my money right. I've been waiting to get that job. I've been waiting to get that spouse. I've been waiting for my career to take off, and that would make me happy. But now I'm seeing in my heart that nothing satisfies but you. Are any of you thirsty? Come. 
drink. Come drink of this water. That's what Jesus said. He says, if you, if anyone believes in me, as the scripture says, out of his, the old folks used to say, out of his, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. God, we want to tap into rivers. God, we want to tap into rivers. We want to tap into rivers. God, take us from the creeks. Take us from the trickles. Take us from the the drip drops, and we want to go into rivers, God. Let us live a reality of rivers. God, I pray that you would let it flow out of us. Everyone we come in contact with, God, let them experience life abundant. God, bring me back to life, just like a a plant that has not had any water, God. And once it receives water, it blooms. Oh, God, do it in us. We raise our hands as a witness, and we say, God, fill us. Fill us. Fill us again. Fill us, oh, God. God, we need you. Let the evidence of your Holy Spirit be in our lives. God, and when you do move upon our hearts, we say that you have freedom and expression through our lives to operate however you want to operate. We say our lives are, is yours. So we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.